Hey, what's up, St. Teresa's? My name is Chase Krause. Thank you again for joining us with St. Teresa's Roundtable Conversations. The first episode, we talked about human dignity. Episode two, we talked about the common good. And today, we're going to be talking about solidarity and subsidiarity. This is getting a little bit more of the practicals of Catholic social teaching, but we still have one more episode to go where we're really going to try to dive into the nitty gritty when it comes to applying this all to uh, today's current climate with the ele election coming up and all these kind of more practical things. Um, um, but as always, I'm joined by the wonderful Amy Allert. Amy, how's it going? Great, thank you. Cool. So uh, we're going to talk about solidarity and subsidiarity today. And I think it's always helpful to kind of define our terms. Um, so I found a definition for solidarity. So I'm going to start with that one. And it's from St. John Paul II. So he says, Solidarity is a firm and persevering determination to commit oneself to the common good. That is to say, to the good of all, and of each individual, because we are all responsible for all. A lot of alls in there. Yes. Um, so yeah, solidarity. It's it's looking at the big picture, right? Uh, I, don't, what, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that you want to start off with or jump into. I think that what it brings to mind is that we really have to remember that our salvation is inextricably intertwined with each other. So I'm not here in a in an island situation no man is an island right yeah and um and so remembering that we are we are always meant to be thinking about relationships and love through a, a trinitarian lens mm. right father son and holy spirit show us how to be in a perfect relationship mm. and so we we remember that in solidarity it's not just me i'm in a community immediately when I'm born into my first community, which is my family. Mm. And then my family lives to, next to another family. And so then we have a neighborhood and it just kind of keeps building from that core building block of the family. Right. Yeah. And, um, and so I, I can't just treat my life in a vacuum. Um, and another way to kind of think of it is that we are our brother's keeper. Mm. Right. So it's in, in the Bible uh, between Cain and Abel, they got that backwards, right? right. Well, Cain yeah. did anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right. and so we do have to remember that we're at, we're here to watch out for each other and take care of each other. It reminds me of that uh, analogy that a bunch of saints use of the churches. The, so the Ark of the Old Testament, the Ark with the flood, that's a prefigurement of the church, right? Mm -hmm. So the church is the Ark. We're all in the boat together. So we can't just be like, oh, there's a hole on your side of the boat, but that doesn't affect me because... Well, if there's a hole inside the boat, it's going to affect the whole boat, right? Yeah. So we solidarity is this idea that, uh, and it, it especially, I mean, you look at the word Catholic, uh, katahalas, right, of the whole. Like, it's it's literally, to be Catholic means it's it's universal. It's, universal. It it's, means it takes every person into account. Um, and there's different degrees of solidarity, too, right? Because there's solidarity with, it comes to globally. There's global solidarity, which we have to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. And there's also solidarity as a country, as a state. And this goes into a little bit of subsidiarity as well. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, and this kind of throws, you know, racism out the door because if you can't have, you can't be racist against one demographic of, of people and have solidarity in mind because right. that's literally the opposite of, of solidarity because you're, you're, you're saying, well, no, you don't matter, but this group matters where right. solidarity says, no, everyone matters. Where it's a big picture, right? It's a global big picture, which I think is why we have, it's a beautiful thing that we have a Pope, right? That oversees the whole church, mm -hmm. right? And we also have the bishops that, you know, that's, that's subsidiarity, right? Local Going, levels. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, we're, to be Catholic, it's, it's awesome. And I think this forces us then to look at a hot button question today, which is immigration, mm, right? Yes. Um, because immigrant, I mean, maybe not so much like right now in the political uh, climate, but I mean. It has been a, a, an issue. Right. Uh, I mean, off and on throughout history. Yeah, for I mean, especially in American history, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you have the 1800s when literally our stance was everybody can come on in. Yes. And then it was really after World War II and kind of going into Vietnam era, that's when it started, the conversation started shifting a little bit like, I don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. and so I guess what's the church's stance on immigration in light of solidarity then? So what, is, what does the church say? Well, in 2003, the bishops came together between Mexico and America, and they actually outlined... Um, five main points. Mm. And this is in the document Strangers No Longer. So can I share those five yeah, points? Yeah. So first of all, uh, people have a right to find economic opportunities in their homeland. Second, persons have the right to migrate to support themselves and their families. Mm. 
Third, sovereign nations have the right to control their borders. Fourth, refugees and asylum seekers should be afforded protection. And finally, as it always comes back to, the human dignity and human rights of undocumented migrants should be respected. I think it's also important to say, though, that there's one more that they add. It says that immigrants, moreover, have the duty to integrate into the host country respecting its laws and national identity. So that is a lot to yeah, chew on. Yeah, but it, it, but, it makes, but it makes sense. And actually, I think it's a very kind of nuanced approach to this, right? Because it, when keeping solidarity in mind, especially the global picture of the, everyone has human dignity, right? I mean, the, the bishops basically say, if, I mean, first of all, because you have human dignity, you have the right to seek uh, employment where you're currently at. Yes. But if that's not possible, right? If you just, you can't provide for your family, it's, you're literally, the health of your family is in danger, right? Either physically, spiritually, or, or both. Mm -hmm. Then if a country has the ability to help another human being because they have human dignity, right. that country should at least have some way to help them. That being said, that country still has the rights to make some kind of laws, right? Yes. Uh, you know, about how people come exactly. into their country because yeah. we have the right to defend our borders. Right. Okay. That being said, you know, a lot of times immigrants are fleeing not just economic instability, but literal their lives. Right, their yeah. lives are in jeopardy because of a... I don't know, either the crime rate or um, corruption within their government and their homeland. And and I don't think that people want to leave their homes. Most often, right. they are literally forced to out of survival. Right. And so then when they do come over to America, for example, and they didn't necessarily come over through the proper channels, right. what does that mean for us? That's where we go back to solidarity, mm -hmm. right? We do have a responsibility to make sure that their basic needs are met. Because we are our brother's keeper. Yes. <laughs> Shelter, nourishment, clothing, mm -hmm. right? And then from there, we start building on that. We, we can add to that as necessary. Um, remembering also that, they, that, this is a, that this is a symbiotic relationship. You know, yes, they're coming to us for help, but there's also a responsibility in that from them too. Right. So yeah. I, I think that it, remembering that this is a, this is a both and, not an either or. Right. Yeah, I remember because uh, my great grandmother immigrated from Mexico. No idea if she did it legally or not. I'm pretty sure she did. Um, but anyway, uh, but it's it's one of those things where I remember when, especially my grandparents, who both were raised um, Spanish speaking, right? Uh, they learned English later on as a second language. My grandfather was a migrant worker, right? Wow. But he did his best to especially when raising my mom and my uncles and aunts to live a Mexican American lifestyle. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. he, he did his best. He, you know, sent the kids to school, you know, taught them, you know, yes, our culture, but also what it means to be an American citizen. Right. right? Yeah. Um, and obviously I'm not saying like, that's like the perfect approach to immigrants or anything, but it, it's that same idea, right? They, they incorporated themselves into the country that they moved to. Just, right? yes. And, and again, it's, it's, they have a duty to integrate into the host country, respecting its laws and its national identity. Yeah. So um, that's a good example. Yeah. yeah. So just, and obviously there's tons can be said about immigration. We're not going to chase that rabbit too much more. Um, but this idea of solidarity, right? It's the big picture. We are one human family and, solidarity. you know, solidarity. So, Next one, that's word subsidiarity. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's, what's subsidiarity? What's a working definition we can go off of? Basically, subsidiarity is just that decision-making should be kept as close as possible to the grassroots level. Mm. So you start off with the smallest organization of people that are organizing themselves for whatever their purpose and goal is. And then if they can't c complete that or, or succeed in that, then you grow to the next level and you ask for more help from a bigger entity, mm, right? So yeah. we have grassroots efforts in our communities with uh, neighborhood communal farms and uh, animal, um, protecting animals and uh, organizing food drives for people that are hungry or, or uh, clothing drives for the homeless. Well, if, if we can't do that, then we need to grow to the next level. So that's where we get like city council involved and we start voting on things like, are the homeless allowed to have tent cities? 
Sure. Okay. And then we grow from there into state levels. You know, what does the governor of, of their state say? So, but, but always remembering that we should start at the smallest possible level of grassroots organization, not so, so it should go like this as far mm. as start here and then get bigger. Sure. Instead of this. We're not. So, so basically subsidiarity is, it's not big government. Right. It's, exactly. It's, it's saying that, no, the government's not there to dictate every single thing you do. Rather, the government's there to support the smaller units, right. namely the, the family first and then right. neighborhood, city, town, whatever, and right. then states and country. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's important. And I think it, it's almost, <laughs> I think it's easier in a lot of ways, too, because it's basically the, the church's idea of subsidiarity is if, is if you can fix the problem or if you can handle the situation, then do it. Right. Right. You just whatever, if it can be handled in your family, then handle it in your family. And I think that's what's hard, too, when it comes to, um, you know, state mandated, uh, you know, education platforms or whatever, because to a certain extent, you're, as parents, they, you have the primary duty to educate your kid mm -hmm. but at the same time that's also the beautiful things about the state giving you the option to homeschool for example yeah. right whereas if you don't if you don't need the state support with education that's that's the whole point of public school is the state support of the family right so that's actually a idea of subsidiarity mm -hmm. right it's if the family can't educate the child then you go to the next level the town is then going to educate the mm -hmm. child right um so but at the same time if that you still have the option to homeschool your children if you don't like the state the school for whatever reason. And the so. church has always been there to support the family. So right. some of the yeah. first schools around the world were run by Catholics. Yeah. Mostly, yeah. A lot of the nuns, right? Right. Yeah. So, that's, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, even too, when you think of like uh, orphanages and, and hostels, yes. I think we talked about this before, but uh, it's the same idea when, when the family can't support the child, but they died or for whatever reason, the church was there to say, okay, you can't do it. There's no immediate family that can take the child. So, okay, okay, we'll take the child. It's to go to that next level of support. Right? Absolutely. Think about how many saints we have that saw a need in a community where they weren't able to support whatever the issue was and they stepped up and devoted their entire lives to it. Mm. You know? Yeah, I think uh, John Bosco. Yeah, but like literally, he, that's mm -hmm. what he did, right? He, he formed boys that yeah. weren't being formed by the families necessarily. Yeah. And then different orders, like the Dominicans are a teaching order, you know? Yeah. And it's just, I love how the church has lived what she says, right? Yeah. We, we've, we have these four Catholic principles, four, we have these four key principles of Catholic social teaching, and mm -hmm. we don't just talk about them, we live them. Yeah. So this is awesome. So solidarity, big picture in mind. We are a brother's keeper. It's considering the all, right? Yeah. Subsidiarity, you start from the grassroots. And then mm -hmm. if that can't make the decision or support whatever, that's when you take it to that next level up. Yeah. Um, and I think that gets us, this kind of lays a really good foundation. Human dignity, common good, solidarity, subsidiarity. Now, next time we can talk about a little bit more of the nitty gritty stuff, um, yeah. kind of get into more practical things. Um, and so... St. Teresa's, we have another episode of Catholic Association coming your way uh, next week. Once again, if you have any questions, if we talked about something and you're like, they didn't say that that well, or like, I'm confused about that, you can always <laughs> um, go to the links we're going to put below. You can always uh, email Amy or I or give us a call uh, if we thought we said something insightful and you're like, that didn't make any sense. Just ask us a question um, and we'll, we'll get back to you. And also for next time, we are going to try to get as practical as we can. So actually, if, if you have any topics that you're interested in, in hearing about or learning about, shoot us an email, give us recommendations, and uh, we'll be trying to do our best to incorporate that into our next conversation. So St. Teresa's, thanks again for joining us for Roundtable Conversations. God bless. Mm -hmm.